Hi everyone! In this video, we will learn how to speed up the execution of a time-consuming program using parallel processing. Don't worry, it's not as hard as it seems. As an example, let's write a for loop to simulate tasks that take a long time to run. To represent these computationally expensive tasks, each iteration will pause the processor for one second, square a number from the list, and append the results to a new list. This loop takes about four seconds to run. That's because, by default, Python only uses a single CPU cord to process each iteration of the loop, even though modern computers have many cores that could be used at the same time. To speed up execution, we can tell Python to use multiple cores at once with the parallel computing library, Joblib. Before we get started, we must determine if our loop can actually be parallelized. A loop is parallelizable when each iteration is independent and does not influence the outcome of other iterations. This is the case for our loop, so it is parallelizable. Great, let's get to work. The first step is to identify the individual tasks being performed and move them into a function. We also need to return the square results instead of appending it to the my squares list. We'll explain why we do this later in the video. From there, we import the joblib library's parallel class and create an object which will manage the parallel processing for us. This object takes the argument n jobs, which allows us to define the maximum number of cores to use. For example, if we pass in two, we instruct Python to use two CPU cores to execute the tasks. Alternatively, to use all the available cores, we can pass a negative one. This is useful when we want the task to be done as fast as possible. Now we have a parallel object, which we will use to process our tasks. This object can be called like a function. It takes, as an argument, the task we want to execute in parallel, followed by the iteration expression from the for loop header. Great, we're almost done. The last step is to import the delayed function and wrap the slow square call to prevent it from executing immediately. After execution, the parallel object returns a list containing the result from each of the slow square function calls. This is why earlier we returned the square results instead of appending it directly to the list. We can capture this list in a variable. Now, if we execute the cell, our code runs much faster. Great! We should note that it is typical to create the instance of a parallel class and call the object all on a single line. This way is more concise, but either approach will work. If you'd like to check out the code we use in this video, we left a link to the Google Colab workbook in the description. With parallelization in your toolkit, you are now equipped to make your code significantly more efficient. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like and subscribe for more coding tips. If you have questions or topics you'd like to see next, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for watching.